do 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 do. I I gotta try to make up some music here. There's just nothing. There there is some music at the main menu, but it's really nothing to get excited about. Um, I am Bradham seventy three to get started. So thank you for joining me. <laughs> this is Airport Sim. Um, it's a game that's available on Steam right now for thirty four ninety nine. If you're interested in picking up a copy, um, use my referral link. It's down in the video description. Uh, Airport Sim is developed, says the developers, MS Games and MK Studio. So it said MK Studio. Not sure what MS Games is. Um, the, it's published by Iceberg Inter Interactive. So that's that answers that question. Um, when I first heard about this game, I was like, is this like an, an actual like airport simulator? It's not really. It's it's an advanced airport ground handling simulator, but that's like a lot more words. So I'm not sure if I would actually, ref I don't know if I would actually call this an airport sim. It's more of like an airport, uh, what's the word? Like an airport logistics simulator, essentially. Um, but you know, they, they, or, or just like airport ground handling simulator. That would probably be, that's still a lot of words, but it's um, not as bad as everything else. Um, I did get sent out the um, the press release. Uh, there are four airports, Vagar, Keflavik, Warsaw, Chopin, and Key West. Uh, there's two licensed aircraft in the game, the Air, Air Bus, Airbus. <laughs> A320 Neo and the 737 Max. And they've also got some, you know, a bunch of part uh partner airport airports. No, airlines. There, there's a you can you can blah, 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 blah. what did I I just forgot how to talk. Um yeah, there's Atlantic Airlines right there. I'm flipping through the press release as I'm reading this. Uh and then there's like a whole slew of included vehicles i'm not going to go through them all because it's kind of pointless but again this is available right now if you want to pick up a copy it's on steam use my referral link 34.99 could be on sale you know check your local listings um but uh, i did jump into this game a little bit and i found it kind of confusing so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start off with you guys if i can get all my wires on my desk untangled i don't know what's going on here um, and we're going to jump into not multiplayer. We're going to jump into the tutorials and, um, and get started. So I'm going to say play. Welcome to the beautiful Vagar Airport, situated on the Faroe Islands. In this tutorial, you'll learn everything you need to know about the tablet. Okay. Okay. Okay, so press. You can press tab or up arrow if you're going to use a, a control pad. Con controller? Jeez. So here's operations. There's in, uh, arrivals and departures. Um, let's see. First tab. Yeah, operations. Okay. map of the airport displaying your current position and all available vehicles and aircraft to be used. Makes sense. And in the final tab named weather, you'll find all the options available to manipulate weather conditions at your present location. Okay. We shall discuss each of these tabs in detail. Okay. The screen is divided into two columns. So this is operations. So you've got operations and tasks. The left hand side acts as a timetable for all flights that are scheduled to take place at the airport on the present day, but divided into arrivals and departures. Okay. At the top, there's a button that filters the flights and shows only the ones you're assigned to handle on the day. Okay. Okay. The right hand side displays a list of tasks you'll have to complete when handling the 
aircraft. Over here? To view the time ah, what happened? In the order in which they should be completed. Ask, well, yeah, that makes sense. When you complete an action, it will be crossed off, and those which are yet to be performed have empty markers on the left side of each task title. Okay. Yeah. While at Vagar, you won't need the map too much. However, at larger airports such as Keflavik or Warsaw, it will be a major player in getting to where you need to be. The map features will show you the quickest route to your destination, and in addition, the location of available airport vehicles, aircraft, and aircraft stands. Pretty much everything to help you navigate the apron. All right. Navigate the map. No controls displayed on screen. Oh, there they are. Right up here. Uh, pre use. Oh, oh. Uh, oh, okay. So there's not a very. So this is not a very big airport at all. All right. Oh. Okay. The GPS view is always centered on your position and rotates around it. And finally, the weather tab. At the top, you'll notice that two different clocks are displayed. Local and universal, what is it? Universal time coordinate, UTC time. Ah. Time at the airport, and the second one shows UTC time, which is used as a common time zone in aviation. UTC time is calculated relative to the prime meridian passing through the famous town in the United Kingdom, Greenwich, which is also known as the center of time. How oh, is it now? Below the clock, you <clears> find <throat> Okay, so I'm assuming it they mean this right here. And under the slider, you'll find a calendar where you can select any date. Try it for yourself and see how the height of the sun changes depending on the time of year. Uh, I don't think we can I don't think we can actually do that right now. Okay. In this instance, the weather data is fetched and based upon the most recent METAR weather data at Vagar Airport. The apply button is used to apply the selected time. So that's what they're talking about up here. Okay. At the very bottom, there are weather presets that you will be able to select. Clear sky, overcast, rainstorm, fog, snow, and blizzard. Some selected conditions, such as cloud <clears throat> Okay. On the left, there is a visualization of the cloud height. That's over here. The lower line corresponds to the height of the cloud base above sea level. The upper line displays the height of cloud tops above sea level. Adjustments of weather conditions are done in real time and do not need to be applied like time changes. Gosh, if that's like cloud tops at 47,000 feet, <clears throat> that's a serious storm. Thank gosh. Okay. So let's go back to the tutorials menu and then we'll go to the next one. Follow me. It happens to. No, I don't know. I don't know. Is there a song that's like follow? I will follow me. Well, this looks like an airport terminal. Gate 12. Support during taxing. We will be using the black and yellow checkered follow me vehicle parked at the terminal for this task. Approach and enter the vehicle. 
Um, there we go. Okay, left trigger, let's see. Q, O to activate operational lights, E to turn on the engine. Open the tablet and switch to the map tab. You will see the route to meet the aircraft at the designated taxiway intersection. Remember that every aircraft moving on the apron has hmm. priority on taxiways and intersections. Drive Press and hold right trigger Oh, right trigger. There we go. Uh, right trigger and left. It says left stick to move on the map, but it's not. Press and hold, right trigger. So that works, but that doesn't. Okay. Kind of weird. There's the plane down there, so it's not like we've got too terribly far to go. Did I? Oh, I've got my headphones on. Let's take the headphones off and then we can actually hear something. No. Okay, so he's about 1.2 kilometers away. Steering is a little janky, but of course this isn't, this isn't a driving simulator. Looks like we have a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour. Which is probably a little over 55 miles an hour. Now, these follow me trucks are rarely used on airports in the United States, unless there's like a communications problem that would require it. Um, but yeah, typically when a plane lands, you know, they don't send pickup trucks out to escort the aircraft in. There's the hold short line, which I j didn't hold short of, but I'm a, I'm a truck so, or pickup truck. So I'm going to, I'm going to assume that I have the clearance for this anyway. There's the other hold short line. Great. Now I will explain step by step what you need to do. Step by step. Position yourself in front of the plane so that the back of your vehicle is facing the aircraft's nose. Okay, so I'll just turn around. You need to activate the follow me sign on the roof of your vehicle so that the pilot knows to follow you. Follow the instructions displayed on screen. Um, press right bumper. Great. Okay. Now follow the map's path directions to the parking area assigned to this aircraft. Maintain a speed of about 30 kilometers an hour. Stay within sight of the pilots and do not stray too far from the aircraft. The distance between you and the aircraft should never be Ooh. 100 meters or more than 250 meters. Okay. If you need the aircraft to stop suddenly, press the displayed button, which activates the stop sign on your vehicle. So that's the left bumper. All right, so we're at 150 meters. Right there's about the perfect speed. I think my finger's gonna fall off if I keep holding it there. Come on there, big airplane guy. How much for, oh, we got a long way to go. Coming up to the, there we go.
But uh, yeah, like when like when I used to fly, I used to see these types of vehicles. They might have a beacon on it. It might not have a sign that literally says "Follow me." Some do. But, you know, especially at really small airports. Well, usually there's not any at really small airports. Unless unless you have facilities on both sides of the runway. Well, I don't know. They might even on, on you know, single runway or on single-sided airports. Um, yeah, they might. Usually they just tell you, like, they'll get on a Unicom frequency and they'll say... Head in this direction or that direction, or do you see this building? Go there, that kind of stuff. But when you get into these large airports, um, yeah, it's probably a different story, but I still have rarely ever seen these trucks used. Did he stop moving? Yeah, it seems like if you get about 170 meters away, ah, darn it. It's really easy to turn the vehicle off if you're using a game pad. But yeah, if you, if, if you get a little further than, you know, 170 meters or so, it seems like the planes actually stop. Yay! Drive to the end. Oh. I see it. I see it right over here, guys. You have just learned how to perform Yay! We learned it. All right, see you later. All right, back to do the tutorials menu. The tutorial. Man, I am like not talking properly tonight. I don't know what my deal is. Maybe it was all those French fries I ate. I actually, you know, make real French fries here at home with a potato, and then I've got like this little potato French fry slicer. It's really good. It's probably not. Probably not the pro what the problem is. <clears throat> can I use the oh I can I can that's pretty cool Now this time holding right trigger and using left works. Feel like I'm in Iceland or something. Okay, so he's lines are marked by perpendicular lines or lines that mark the end or beginning of a turn. Each gate is marked by a white or red line. No object 
objects or vehicles should be present within their range unless the gate is specifically not in use. I think they're talking about these curved lines here. As you can see, at the first stand, there are cones lying there. Your task is to clear the stands and move them to a safe place. We have a designated area where you must carry the cones to. This is kind of the whole designated designated area, but right here. These aren't the cones they're talking about, I don't think. We have to go and get these cones. <clears throat> Otherwise, they are likely to get sucked up into the jet engine. One cool thing is, you don't have to do them one at a time. You can stack the cones. You can also run by holding down your left... Gamepad button. Okay, so now we got to go here, which is where we're going to guide the plane in, I think. And then we hit right trigger to hit martial mode. Okay. Follow the controls displayed on the screen. You want the center, you want the rear wheels pretty centered up. They don't have to be perfect. Come on. Okay. I guess we're going to hit left trigger and tell them to slow down. Or do we hold that? Oh gosh. Okay. We went way over those lines. <laughs> you have just how to marshal an aircraft onto a stand safely and accurately. I don't know about that. All right. Tutorial menu. So we got that done. Chalks and cones. Goldhofer by. Uh, there is a, a, a very subtle background noise i think it's part of the the soundtrack in this game and it sounds exactly like my oven alarm what the pre the president's here well this would be a vi well no this is a this is a 737 max so this would be like vice president Okay. The aircraft has arrived at the gate, and its engines and all beacon lights are switched off. You may safely approach the aircraft's front set of wheels. Place a set of chocks under the wheels. To do this, approach and point at the front wheels, and press the displayed button to place the... Uh-oh, what do I do? Meatball, walk in front of running engine. <laughs> I just got a... a uh... To raise them, press the displayed button, click the display Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. the displayed button to position them. To throw the object, hold down the displayed button. Just like with the chocks, place the cones in their indicated areas. The order in which you do this doesn't matter. Better not matter. Okay. Oh, I forgot we can run. Uh, 
Okay. Loud. Of steering of the aircraft by bypassing the aircraft's pressurized hydraulic systems during a pushback procedure. You'll learn more about this in another tutorial. Now approach the front wheel and firmly insert the bypass pin in its slot indicated by the marker. Congratulations! You have just prepared and secured the aircraft for parking and further servicing. Now, we will present you with the same scenario, but in reverse. You will need to collect all the previously placed safety articles efficiently and safely. At Vagar Airport, we have a unique situation where an aircraft can leave the stand and taxi without being pushed back onto the taxiway. This means the final step of this process will be taking the bypass pin out of the front gear strut and the aircraft can go on its way. The aircraft has already been serviced and is waiting for it to be released from the ground crew's hands. Each parking I'm going to assume it's this one. Stand is identified <coughs> by a red or white perimeter outline. When the aircraft is in motion and its engines are running, no unnecessary objects, vehicles or personnel should be inside this area. This is due to the risk of the aircraft colliding with a vehicle or unwanted objects being sucked into the engine. If such a situation occurs and the area is not clear, you'll be notified through your in-game <laughs> I hope so. All right. Okay. So yeah, this is definitely a United States government aircraft. It's painted in presidential colors, but a president would, you know, fly on a 747 or maybe like a 777. I'm not sure. I guess Air Force 1 is still a 747. I mean, this one this would technically be Air Force 1 if the president was on it. Um Oh, we just, I love, yes, let's just put the cones in the middle of the road, shall we? Uh, let's see, there we go. Let's do these first. We'll do these chalks. And the bypass pin. Oh, they're starting up already. Awesome. Oh. See tutorial menus. What's next? Chalks. See GPU. I want an NVIDIA RTX 4090 Ti with 64 gigs of RAM. And I have to hit A to play the tutorial. Now, I'll teach you how to operate a ground power unit, which is known as GPU in aviation jargon. You're probably wondering, what exactly does the GPU do? Besides what its name gives away, let me explain that to you. I think it's After the... Landing, the aircraft generates electricity from the engine. But, as you may have noticed, the aircraft shuts down its engines faster than we can connect and start the GPU. Shortly after landing, the crew start the auxiliary power unit, or APU for short, which will generate electricity for the aircraft until we, the ground handling crew, connect the GPU to the aircraft, which will power the aircraft more efficiently and at a lower fuel price. During this time, the cockpit crew and ground handling can perform their assigned tasks without 
how to cut in power to the aircraft. Okay, now you need to use the tug parked in the marked area and transport the GPU to the position next to the aircraft. There's Is this it? An aircraft parked there, which is scheduled to depart soon. This will give us a chance to show you the complete process of connecting and disconnecting the GPU. Yeah. Before you start, you need to uh. connect the GPU to the tow hook of the tug so that you can transport it. It's quite simple. You need to back up the tug so that the hook is close to coupling with the GPU. You don't then say. Out of the tug, approach the rear and follow the action displayed on the screen to couple them together. Wow. Okay, engine on. Why? Better. Jeez. Drag with right trigger X to connect. Great. Just okay. remember that you hook and unhook other trailers in the same way. Hop back in the tug and head over to the aircraft as indicated. Yeah, we're going to come right up here. Now, detach the GPU from the tub <coughs> and go to the rear side of it, where you'll need to open the hatch revealing the control panel. It says it's disconnected. Okay. I'll try. Okay, pick it up. one that is okay now notify okay through the communication panel that they can turn off the APU and switch to GPU power that's gonna be up here open this panel using the controls displayed on screen uh 
Oh, this communications. Flight deck option. Oh. Okay, that's weird controls on the controller. Close that up. <laughs> Yes, we can. When you finish all your other tasks and it's time to disconnect the GPU, you'll need to inform the crew that they can start the APU. We'll teach you how to do that on this aircraft. Head over to the indicated area. Approach the aircraft from the side where the GPU is parked. Your task now is to notify the cockpit crew that they may start the APU. Okay, so this is kind of what we did before. Okay, so I think it was this. No. Wasn't that. There. Ground crew. Flight deck. Trigger. APU trigger. Turn on the APU. Oh. I already had them off. <clears throat> yeah, there's the APU. Yep. Now go to the panel and it only takes a minute or so. Then turn the engine switch from run to idle. Finally, unplug the cable connected to the aircraft and place it back into the GPU. What? We can like walk up the cable? That's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the right engine is off. Left engine is spinning up. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. So that's GPU passenger stairs. This will be a quick one, right? Right? <laughs> this will probably be the last one I do. But let me know if what you think of the game.
Okay. Which one? That's how. Slowly approach the lower edge of the door. To make things a little easier, on the dashboard of the vehicle's cab, you will see two illuminating lights. One red and one green. The red light indicates that you aren't correctly aligned with or near enough to the door. The green light blinks when you are at the ideal distance from the aircraft's door to deploy the vehicle's standing How do I align the stairs with the aircraft's entrance bottom edge? Perfect. Um, is that right? Gone it. Now, do I get out or what do I do? So I can't get out. Is it? Let's see. Hold on. Gosh darn it. I keep turning off the darn thing. Well, I can't get out. Align the stairs. I like I, okay this is so confusing
one red and one green. The red light indicates that you aren't correctly aligned with or near enough to the door. The green light blinks when you are at the ideal distance from the aircraft's door to deploy the vehicle's standing supports and to raise the stairs platform if necessary. When the light illuminates a solid green color, it means the vehicle is in place and secured. This indicates that you can continue up the stairs and safely open the door. Remember not to slam the vehicle into the aircraft. The lip of the stairs only needs to be barely touching the edge. Well, how the heck do I get out? I don't need to know how to do that. How the? What in the world? I am so stuck. No. Continue. Don't need to do that. Wait. Open the plane door, secure passenger doors, connect stairs to the car. Okay. Okay, that's okay. I can't do that. Like, literally, nothing else is working. I did that. Did that, did that, did that, did that. So I should be able to get out right here. Help! It's like, I feel like the stairs are not even remotely aligned properly. Somehow I deployed. Oh, okay. There's the deployment things. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh, I I am so confused right now. Um I feel like I should be closer. Okay. So I'm going to shut off. Oh, no. I got to turn it on so I can... Deploy these little... See those little things that come down? Now I'm going to shut it off. Now I'm going to shut it off again. Apparently I can't when I have those deployed. Okay, I am completely stuck. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Let me know in the video description what I'm doing wrong. Because apparently I am I'm definitely doing something wrong. But um, this has kind of been my first look at Airport Sim... I got to admit, I'm somewhat intrigued. Like, I, I want to play this some more, um, but I got to figure out what I'm doing first. So we'll come back to this 
uh, in the next episode. Hopefully by then I will have figured it out and we can move on. But uh, this has been Airport Sim again. If you want to pick up a copy, use my referral link down in the video description. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm Bradham73. I will see you next time. <gasps> Bye for now.